If you've ever been in a position to take care of someone else, especially after a traumatic event, you may have experienced compassion fatigue. But what exactly is compassion fatigue, and what does it have to do with someone who's a sighted supporter? What's up, VIPs? Welcome to my channel. And compassion fatigue is something that takes place typically in people that have a job where they're taking care of someone else. Now, it can be an actual job, like maybe a hospice nurse or a, a trauma nurse or somebody who works in a counseling role, that sort of thing. Or it can be a job where it's not so much a career, but maybe you're taking care of a loved one who's got a serious illness or who's been through a traumatic event, that sort of thing. And so whenever somebody experiences something and then there's somebody else to help take care of them, that person that is the helper can experience compassion fatigue. And we're talking about this because a lot of times sighted supporters who are helping out somebody who's recently lost their sight can experience something related to compassion fatigue. By the way, if you're new here, my name is Derek and this channel is all about helping people discover life after sight loss. I produce new content each week on topics such as emotions, relationships, technology, and more. So I would encourage you to hit that subscribe button and that little bell icon so that you don't miss another single video. Now, how does compassion fatigue relate when it comes to someone who's a sighted supporter? Now, we've talked about uh, sighted supporters on this channel before, and it's somebody whose life is directly impacted by someone else losing their sight. This could be a spouse, a parent, uh, you know, a really, really close friend, something like that. And compassion fatigue, I think a lot of times is reserved for those people who are helping in traumatic events. Maybe somebody who's, you know, giving out care uh, each and every day and you think, oh, it's uh, maybe a hospice nurse or somebody who, uh, like uh, somebody who's in the ER or, you know, works out in an ambulance, something like that. And that's definitely true. Compassion fatigue could definitely weigh on them. And it's not quite burnout all the way, but it can really, really cause some stress and anxiety if you're not careful. But the sighted supporter can actually experience this at times as well. Now, I don't necessarily want to compare. Uh, that's not what the purpose of this video is about. It's just to say, if you're a sighted supporter, you might be experiencing some compassion fatigue. And the way you know is basically you just look at your lifestyle and determine, are you, you know, sleeping as well as usual? Are you irritable and things like that? It doesn't necessarily mean it's automatically compassion fatigue and you got to get out of the house and away from the person that's blind in your life, but it could be symptoms that are related to compassion fatigue, which eventually could lead to burnout, which is definitely not something you want to do. And so I just want to encourage you that if you're experiencing anything like this, my wife and I often talk about how sometimes you just need to take time for yourself. That means maybe leaving the house, going out with friends. Maybe it just means being on your own. Whatever it is that gives you energy that, you know, sort of lifts you up and brings you back, that's what you need to do. Because life can really get centered around the visual impairment that the other person is experiencing. And look, trust me, I get it. The person is going through a lot and I understand and it makes sense, but you won't be any good or any help if you are experiencing fatigue constantly. It's going to weigh on you. It's going to harm your relationship. It's just not going to be good at all. So you've got to take time for yourself because compassion fatigue, you know, getting worn out and worn down is only going to cause problems in the long run. So I just want to encourage you today that if you're a sighted supporter and you're watching this and you're feeling a bit like, oh my gosh, it's only been six months and there's so much to do and paperwork and technology and, and finding assistance and all that. Look, I get it. So just stop and take time for yourself. Even if that means it's only an hour at a time, maybe it's just a half a day where you go out and maybe you just go shopping or maybe you go out and you play around a golf or whatever it is that you do. Maybe you want to spend time with friends. Maybe you don't. It doesn't matter because it's all about you and making time for yourself. I know that the person who's lost their sight is going through a lot but so are you. And that's really important to remember. So if you're interested, I got a couple of podcast episodes that I've done with my wife where we talk about being a sighted supporter. I'm going to link those down below and hopefully you can check those out and get some support because you deserve it because you're a great sighted supporter and you need some support as well. So hopefully this video was encouraging to you and you'll take time every once in a while to find some time for yourself so you can avoid 
that compassion fatigue. All right, you've listened to me ramble on for a bit. Now it is your turn. My question for you today is this. If you're a sighted supporter, have you ever experienced something related to compassion fatigue? Have you ever gotten worn out and worn down? And how has it impacted your relationship with a person who's visually impaired in your life? I'd love to hear about it, and I know others would as well. So let me know in the comments below. Hey, if you liked today's video, if you found it encouraging, make sure to give it a big thumbs up, share it with somebody that you know, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss another single video. Thanks so much for watching today, and until next time, remember that sight loss isn't the end, it's just the beginning. My name is Derek Daniel from lifeaftersightloss.com, and I'll see you in the next one.